another one in the bag, man. Damn. Jeez, F Infinite. What a cool guy, man. <sighs> one of my heroes, bro. One of my heroes, man. And uh, we touched on some really cool stuff, man. Like, I didn't know that history of Street Fighter Three and how he was involved in all of that, man. Yeah. Like, it's my favorite game. You know that Street Fighter, man. I, I, I love played it. that specific Street Fighter Three game so many times and just didn't even notice that his voice was behind those tracks. I love it. I love it. That man. was incredible. What else did you like in the episode? I liked, um, what else was it that I liked? Oh, the fact that he invented the word T dot O dot. That was great. <laughs> that was insane. I mean, that, that, that revolutionized how people talked about Toronto all across North America and the world. That was big. That's a huge influence. I really liked how he never changed who he was throughout his career. Yeah. His integrity, he knows his worth. He didn't change for nobody. And the industry will test you a lot. Yeah. So for him to be able to be who he is, yeah. where he's from, and never changing, that's that's a that's a great role model. And right he there. showed me a lot of love too, man. Yeah. You know, and I, I have the same for him. So it was good to see two Rexdale man them, you know what I'm saying? Hey. Get together and do it. Hey. So without further ado, infinite. Welcome, everybody, to the Dreams Don't Have Deadlines podcast, where a dream is what you make it, but you'll never make it. Without a dream. That's right, man. We got the whole crew in the house. Of course, I got my co-host Marwan with me. We got the dream team in the back. What's up? What's up? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And my name is Rochester. Everybody calls me Juice, so just call me Juice. You know what I mean? And uh, why are we here? We are in here in service of you, right? We want to make sure your dreams become a reality. Why? Dreams don't have deadlines, dreams baby. Dreams don't have deadlines, baby. That's why we're here, man. You can have ups, you can have downs, but do not give up on those dreams. And we have a very special guest. Do you want to run down the stats of our very... I mean, I, we'll, I mean I'm mean, i excited. We'll, we'll be here for a year, probably, just running <laughs> down the stats of the legend in the building. Yeah. But, I mean, the, the list goes on. Two-time MMVA Ooh. winner, two-time Juno Award winner, Ooh. a man that revolutionized Canadian hip-hop mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. What else you got? I mean, he probably was a great influence on you, right? Huge influence on me. Uh, helped shape the MC that I am today with his storytelling, his wordplay, um, the videos that he put out. You know the 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 level that he made sure that he was always on when it came to his bars and his music, man. It it it's uh, if you were from Rexdale or you just from Toronto at the time, you know who we're talking about. The one and only Infinite, man. Woo, what up, let's man? get it, what up, man. What up? It's my guy right here, man. For How sure. you feeling, brother? I'm feeling good, man. Thank you for having me, man. First question. It's a very serious question. Yeah. Are you happy? I'm happy. I am happy. Good. I am happy. Good. Man. Good. Yeah. That's what's up. No That's doubt. what we want to know, man. No we want doubt. to make sure that energy is right. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. No <laughs> Before doubt. we get it popping, man. Yeah. yeah, like I said, I'm very happy you're here, bro. We have so much to talk about. Yeah. You've been through so much. Your journey is incredible. Your story mm. is incredible. And we want to share that with our community. You no, know what no I'm saying? Doubt. Because like I said, this is DDHD, man, and that's what we're all about here. Because I feel like the best way to learn is to study the greats that have done it before you, mm -hmm. learn from their their wins and also their failures. You know what I mean? 100%. Yeah, yeah. so that's what we're all about here, man. No doubt, yeah, man. Yeah. Do you notice the impact that you have every day on, on what you did for the industry and what you're still doing? I do notice the level of, like we set bars, like we were trying to, we wanted to set bars back then when we was doing our thing, even mm -hmm. up to now. When it came to videos, when it came to production, and when it came to lyrical content, you know, sometimes you just got people throwing out lyrics on, on, on tracks, not really saying too much, just it's like a gimmick. Yeah. But we like to say stuff. We like to send a message when we when we doing stuff. So, I mean, I hope that did impact the rest of the industry in the hip hop community, you know? I mean, it seemed like it impacted all the people in this room. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't grow up here, but I mean, just uh, us talking about the other day, you're um your tracks on the street fighter right. uh, game like me as a kid i played that game and i had no idea your voice was behind those tracks yeah. man yeah. so like, you touch all different types of areas of our our upbringing upbringing i would say yeah I, lo I love that how you know i've heard the story of how there was pretty much everybody in toronto wanted that placement wanted mm. that job yeah. you know and you kind of beat out Every the Cardis, the 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 maestros, the Mishis, everybody who was in the city was trying to get that because it's probably the first time um, Capcom was in Canada trying to 
make yeah, a yeah, game, they came, right? They came to Canada, yeah. yeah, like the whole mechanic. I'm a Street Fighter head, so we can go at this for a while. Yeah. And I know the mechanics of two to three were different. You know right. what I'm saying? The characters were a little bit different. Yeah. They're trying new things. It's very, you can feel the hip hop essence within right. that right. whole game, you know? Right. So you turn on the game as the intro, you know, Infinite's killing it on the intro. You go to the select screen and it's another Infinite record. Yeah, and if yeah. you're good enough to beat the game, you get another record yeah, yeah, from yeah. him at the same time, yeah, yeah. man. Like so, an outro, right? Yeah, an outro, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So no doubt. talk to us a little bit about that. Man, that was a, a real good experience. Like, I'm never gonna forget that experience. I mean, they came to Canada and mm -hmm. they had translators with them. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just gave them what they needed, you know? Is it one of those things? Because I just read, I'm reading actually um, Shoe Dog, which is uh, the guy who created Nike, Phil, Phil Knight, mm -hmm. right. right? And he talks about how Japan was very big in terms of him getting his right. shoe deal and stuff like that. And he talks about the meetings and how Japanese people like to do their business differently. Right. Like you don't know if they're feeling you or they're not feeling you. Right. You know, you could walk into a room and you know, they're very proper and they're all yeah, in their yeah, shoes, yeah, but yeah. they're not gonna smile when you bust a joke. They're not gonna, you know, if you say something bad, they're not gonna say that either. So yeah. when you were in there, was it like, I don't know if they're feeling me or not. Like, do I feel like a scene from Kill Bill? Like, what is it? Well, you know what? Even though I don't understand their language, mm -hmm. I mean, while I was even in the audition, I seen, I seen, you know, the, the kind of like huddling, you know what I'm saying? Crowding up and whispering. I don't know what they're saying, but right, right. you can see the body language, like mm -hmm. they're interested in like, yeah, yeah, you know? And then when we got to the studio a few days later, like, cause we did, we did, let's say we did this, uh, audition on a Thursday or Friday. Right. They, I got the call Sunday mm. to say, yeah, you did it. Like, you got it. We want you tomorrow in the, in the studio with three songs. <laughs> you know what I mean? So... So when you auditioned, was it like, is it in some kind of studio or do you like freestyle in front of them? They run the beat and you just drop whatever you have or like... You, you ever see like the rap game when they yeah. have a stage and then you got some judges around a table? That's what it was like. But okay. it, was, oh. it was actually on a stage stage. Oh, okay. Yeah, like a, you know, medium sized stage. Mm -hmm. And it was like down on a, on the floor mm -hmm. on, on the, around the table. Right. With their pens and stuff, right? <laughs> Yeah, I can see that. Like yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, must have yeah. been an interesting experience for you, and in, yeah. in terms of where you were uh, in your career, and right. then going to this audition, and yeah. these guys with their translators, just with a little pen, just yeah. like, did you feel see anything out of out of it, or feel anything out of it? I just, I just felt a good energy. I felt mm -hmm. like I'm a type of rapper that I feel like I could rap on any beat, whether it's mm -hmm. fast, slow, mm -hmm. rock, reggae. Arm, I don't like I could rap on any beat. That That's was a how fast I feel. ass beat, bro. Like yeah. That was, yeah. <laughs> that was like, like so when that was a video game beat they threw at me. Right. So I had to write to that. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, I, I wrote to it. It was fast. Was the audition you writing to the beat? Um during the audition or after? To be honest know? with you, I can't remember what beat I was rapping on in the audition. Okay, okay. But I knew it was fast. Fast, yeah. Something yeah. similar to what you ended yeah, up with. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. That was fast, man. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what I mean? But it came off still, you know? Yeah, Hell yeah, dude, it came man. off, man. Yo, so um your love of hip hop, man, you can feel it in everything you write. You know, yeah. you're very like I know you talk about being a reality rapper. You right. know what I'm saying? Instead of like quote unquote gangster rap or whatever right. talking about uh your life experience but um you know for me your flow is just one of the best flows in in hip-hop man like just the way you sit in pockets and stuff yeah. and you're able to tell a story and really draw people into yeah. the things that you're staying with your right. lyrical ability where did all that start from well thank you juice man because yeah. i i admire your skills too like like you're one of the there's only a handful out here of guys that could do what you do you know what i'm saying so you deserve your flowers too you understand what i'm saying respect, but respect um what was the question i'm just i'm still soaking that part in that <laughs> i just want to make sure we got that right there so i'm using that but like um where did your influences come from to give you your lyrical ability uh, my influences came from my older brother kane mm -hmm. kane used to rap mm -hmm. he used to write and go to the studio and record this is like way back when i was like like probably hmm I was probably in grade six when right. I started writing. Mm. So, you know, with that, seeing my brother, I thought he was the illest rapper. 
You know what I mean? Yep. And he had the voice to go with it. And then he used to have, he had the gear to go with it. Mm -hmm. Just everything Look, was just everything. bomb, you know? Yep. So I I liked, I loved the culture, like just learning from him, you know? And I started writing my own stuff. Me and my friends at school, we used to write our own lyrics and it just turned into something one after the other, so, battling each other in the bathrooms and stuff. Mm -hmm. Then turned into something even greater when we got to high school. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when I met Quadro. Right. You know what I'm saying? Get a concept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then it just started getting more and more, you know, more and more into it. Which I think we can both relate to because I kind of came up the same way. You know, uh, one of my friends, Blau, who's been my engineer for years, came from New York to my school. Right. And I wasn't really rapping at the time. I just had a love for hip hop. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I went to, I, I grew up in Rexdale, but I went to school in Woodbridge. So mm -hmm. I was like the only black person there. And it was nice to see somebody else come into the school and kind of like have the same things that I love. Right. Right. And then when he started spitting, like the whole school started going around and then everybody came to me after they're like, yo, Juice, there's another black guy who can rap. Yo. You got to link <laughs> up with him, yo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we did. And I heard him spit some bars and yeah. I was like, yo, this this guy's amazing, right? Yeah. And then he told me to do the same thing. And then he kind of coached me into writing and, and that's okay. how we became okay. friends. But also, your rise was kind of quick, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I don't feel like it was like, you you rose up pretty, I know it's it's a road to get there. Yeah, 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 but yeah. like, off the hop, yo, you were getting a lot of awards, man. And what was that like? So joining Ghetto Concept, like I used to support my brothers Quadro and Dolo before mm -hmm. I even joined the group. Like I said, we went to high school. Mm -hmm. While Dolo was in jungle, you know, Quadro connected with Dolo and they formed Ghetto Concept. Right. And then, you know, just me and Quadro being at school doing assemblies, you know, hanging out, whatever. Mm -hmm. I feel like that right there kind of, you know, just brought me in closer to seeing what they were doing and going on the road and starting to do shows. And, and I wanted Inspired to go you. too. Yeah, you know, so I'm like, yo, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to travel too, mm -hmm. and then they, they just fired a DJ, you know what I'm saying, and then I was like, I know how to put a record on, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I used that excuse to go on like to go on tour, like do go do certain shows across the, you know, North America, right, and that kind of drew me in, drew me in, you but know they what knew saying? you had bars though. Quadro knew I could rap because yeah. we used to do school assemblies together, right? Yeah, but I was like. Okay, they, they already got Ghetto Concept. Right. Let me put a record on or something. I want to I wanna go on the road, you know what I mean? Because it was mad <laughs> cool. They were meeting mad rappers back then. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, hell yeah. So, in one of the rehearsals, I must have spit spit something over. Um, it was actually Easy on the Motion instrumental. Jeez. Yeah, and then the, the producers, okay. yeah, <laughs> the producers, even um, Born Swift, he was there too. Rest in peace, Born Swift, man. And um, mm -hmm. they were liking how I was sounding over easy on the motion. And they were like, yo, you yeah, should record it like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We I end up doing shows like that, too. And I end up rapping in the in the, in the, in the sequence. And then we end up just saying, yo, let's record it like that. Wow. And then that's how easy on the motion came about. Yes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Dope record, man. Like, yeah. yo, you could not hear that on college radio because we didn't have flow back then. Yeah. But like that was in any place you could find toronto hip-hop or hip-hop in canada that was definitely in rotation like 88.1 yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> pretty much yeah pretty much man yeah. do you remember who directed that video my boys jesse terrero and yuli terrero jesse from, terrero yeah, man yeah, come yeah, on yeah, man yeah. shout out jesse terrero and yuli man mm -hmm. my boys right there at what point did you become officially part of the group so was, to be honest with you I think it was official in 1994. All right. You know, that's when we started going to seminars like Jack the Rapper, How Can I Be Down? Right. We performed at um, Howard Homecoming, which Ooh. is in Washington. So we went to Howard University. That's wow. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Talk a little bit more about that because now we got, you know, you got Me Dam and um, Revolt and a lot of these mm -hmm. conferences now right. where artists can go and grow and build with other yeah you know, like-minded individuals. So what was it like back then in the early stages? It of was that? mad dope because, yeah. you know, we were young coming into the industry. Mm -hmm. And at these seminars, you don't see fans. Mm -hmm. You you see a crowd, but the crowd that you're seeing is industry people, like mm -hmm. artists, mm -hmm. executives. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, we got on the elevator 
and the elevator door was closed, like starting to close. Me and Quadro made it on the elevator <laughs> and it was kind of packed in the elevator. When I looked up, I seen Suge Knight and I was like, yo, wow. okay. <laughs> yo, <laughs> yeah, I see that. Corrupt, it's... I seen Daz. Woo. They came out on the fourth floor and me and Quadro were curious. <laughs> right. So we came out right. on the fourth floor and we just watching the play, like watching what was going on. You know, we was kids, right? Of yeah, course, yeah, so of course. At these seminars, you were seeing people like Biggie Smalls, mm -hmm. Puff Daddy, like they're staying on the same hotel as you. So That's crazy. as kids, you don't know, like it was like a different experience, you know? Yeah. That different experience. It crazy for you guys seeing figures like that at such a young age. Yeah. 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 And they, 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 they noticing you too, because mm -hmm. remember, there's no mm -hmm. fans. Like, you have to be somebody like who? Who's this? Like right. they're wondering that too, right? No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. So, what do you like more? Do you like uh, creating the music or performing the music? I like that. I like that question. I always see people ask that in interviews and stuff. Yeah. I like creating. I like creating the the music because mm -hmm. I like when it's done. Like I I listen to it and listen to it, mm. and I see where I could perfect it even more. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, What's your so process I like? Say it again. What's your process like creating? Uh, I usually like write into the instrumental. Mm -hmm. I usually like that, but I could write without the instrumental. Mm -hmm. But usually, when I hear the instrumental, there might be like like Juice was saying, certain pockets that you want to do certain things, mm -hmm. and you know, write towards what you hear the beat doing, right? Because your voice is like an instrument itself. You know what I'm saying? So when you hear when you hear a track, picture your voice being an instrument added to that track mm -hmm. to overall make it polished you know i heard about it that way you relate hell yeah hell yeah man yeah. hell yeah i like i like being in there i like crafting music you know i think there's a fine line between both like what a lot of kids are doing right now is they're letting the vibe create the music for them you know what i'm saying and i think that's great because you're getting the initial emotion right out off of the bat but there is something to going back and taking that vibe and then kind of chiseling at it and perfecting it a yeah. little bit more, you know? So what do you like more? You do, do you like performing or recording better? Yo, listen, man. I was the kid at Thanksgiving dinner doing the running man, trying to rap to everything. <laughs> I am, I am, uh, I'm a ham, bro. I'll go right on stage and yeah? I love to do my thing. Okay, I love okay. to be, I like that um, because it's like theater, right? Like you get an initial uh, feeling of what, is working yeah, and what's not yeah, right yeah, away because yeah. some stuff sounds great in the studio yeah but if you can't for me i want to do everything that i do in the studio on stage okay you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah, i always yeah, want to yeah, feel yeah. like if i can't do it on stage yeah i, I don't want to put it in a song yo right, or i gotta right. figure out a way that i can do both yeah you know i do love sitting down with the music and creating something and getting yeah. that initial um feeling like you just you like you just struck gold you know that feeling right. that you for a feeling when yeah. you're like yo this verse is crazy yeah, 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 what did yeah, i just yeah, do yeah, yeah. where did that come from yeah. i don't know yeah, yeah. it's yeah. god given but i put it out into the yeah. world and that feeling like that's like that's up there with sex for me yo you know what i'm saying yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah. it's 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 any creative will tell you that yeah you know so i do love that but i love being around people i love performing i love going yeah. on tour and i love going on tour too yeah. man yeah. i love yeah. going on tour yeah. too yeah. but I, I mean if i had to pick one mm -hmm. i'd love the creative, creative process, process. Yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. well being actually after writing it and being in the studio mm -hmm. and hearing myself in the headphones through that mic I, I love that part so at that time when you when you joined your group did you uh were you guys staying out of trouble we were going through our own experiences at the time okay but then there was a point where we all just started doing our own thing. Like I lost my brother, one of my brothers, mm -hmm. uh, rest in peace, Squigs. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when things started taking a left turn. You know okay. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's when things started going left. Was it uh, internally or was it something they were doing? Nah, I, it's, it was nothing that had to do with the members of the group. It was right. more like, something to do with myself. Mm -hmm. I was just angry at the world from yes. losing my bro. So I Which didn't care about rap. Bro. Yeah. Hell I, yeah. I didn't care about rap no more. I didn't keep music. I just lost my bro mm -hmm. rap. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I was angry and then I started making decisions that I felt like God ha held me down because he really did. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. So um, to answer your question, it was, it was, smooth at the same yeah it was a balance mm -hmm. it was a balance it was a balance was it um was it at a time after you guys started winning awards or was it before 
actually it happened the year we won our first award okay wow so let's say we won in april mm. i lost my bro in november mm. wow. that same year and that was the mmba that you first won no that's the juno first juno yeah so that 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 whole event after that you how long did it take you to find your balance of going back to music and focusing on it did, was that a journey for a long when time? i went solo you went so solo. when i because my bro always said he would um invest in my music if i did a solo project so when he said that you know it, it stuck in my head you know but then after when he passed i felt like you know fuck the music mm -hmm. but he would want me to do it mm -hmm. so then that's what made me start the the infinite chapter Got you know it. what i'm saying Shh. i hear that one thousand yeah. percent man yeah, um, yeah. not even to compare the story but like i did lose like my cousin who was like a brother to me uh, yeah. a few years ago from an aneurysm oh, you know snap. and um he was 44 years old he was still pretty young you know yeah. what i mean still doing his thing mm -hmm. rest in peace to sean man i still love you and i still feel his energy sometimes his name is sean his name is sean that's yeah. my brother squig's name too sean shit. that's crazy that's shit. yeah but i for real that's yo dope. you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah yo. and that energy is just it stays with me yo even to this day like sometimes i'll be thinking about stuff and stuff that's on my mind and i get a vision of him like yeah. giving me certain advices that he used to give me and stuff yeah, 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 and yeah. pushing me in certain directions mm. man and i i feel like even from that time i've been more focused than i've ever been right before right. and i and for some reason i feel his energy there pushing me towards that that's yo. exactly how i feel too. yeah so i can relate man 100 yeah. percent, bro so i mean i felt like it was squigs and carrying me mm -hmm. through you know mm -hmm. trying to protect me from i was still in the street doing right. foolishness but i feel like i was covered yeah. but then after yeah. eventually it took a couple couple times for me to realize like yo you, this could go this you're here for something yo. bigger. yeah yeah you know yeah you're so supposed then, to be doing this so me basically beating a bid mm -hmm. made me realize okay if i went away for two decades bro and i and i got the chance to not go away i'm gonna make something of this now like mm -hmm. i'm gonna make make this count yes you know what i mean i'm not gonna yes. it, it does something to you it doesn't make you just okay i beat it but I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm not, not going. No, man. Like I'm, I'm making this count. I'm here. This is what. That. Yeah. I love that. You know what I'm saying? Really and truly. And it, and it worked, bro. Because as soon as you went solo. Yeah. First record you dropped. First got, record. Yeah. Got to get mine. Got to get mine, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. MMVAs went crazy yeah, over yeah, here, yeah, yo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Divine Brown on the hook too, Divine right? Divine Brown. Yeah. Shout out Divine Brown, Jeez. yo. Yeah. Talk about that record, man. Like, man, shout out Golden Boy, mm. you know, K Cut, man. He was a part of Main Source. Y'all know that's right. Yeah, yeah, K Cut, man. Of so, course. So of course. I, I went to K Cut for my first. Okay, this is my first song, my solo career. I need, I need a K Cut beat. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So he played me. I think Gotta Get Mine was one of the first ones he threw at me. Mm. One of the first ones. I had to have that. Uh, yeah. yeah, I had to have that. Th that's a good sign when you sit and you're like, because you never know what you're gonna get, what energies are there, yeah. if the, if it's gonna mesh with whatever you're feeling at the time, and for the man to play like one beat, press play, no. it's like, yep, this the one. The thing is, <laughs> the thing is, he's a he's a he's a a mega producer. He's right. a monster producer, right. and he didn't have to throw that beat my way. You know, mm. producers hold back mm -hmm. when it depends which rapper you are. Like, mm. producers will play you. The medium. Yep, beats. they got the pack for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They got the and B pack same, and the A pack. Yeah. yeah. So they'll play the A pack <laughs> for like the Them big ones. artists. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, like what he threw the A pack at me, and I was like, okay, hey, this must be Squigs. Mm -hmm. And 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 K Cut trusted me right. to do that. So the only thing is, nobody in Canadian rap ever rapped over a commercial or R and B type beat at that time right. so i was kind of i was i'm not gonna lie i was kind of nervous right i was like i'm gonna come out yeah. of ghetto concept I'm gonna, I'm gonna i'm gonna start my solo career yeah i gotta make sure it's right my first mm -hmm. impression is right 
it's kind of in the midst of the quote unquote jiggy era too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So people are walking a fine line. You didn't yeah. want to be if you're from the streets, you had to be in the streets and locks was getting, you know, dumped on for wearing the shiny suits and them type. Yeah. Hair, you know? So, you so I walk. wanted to balance it. Right. And so I, the way I did it was drop hardcore lyrics on this R and B type slash money beat mm -hmm. so that you can't say nothing yes. but you know guys try to rap hardcore all the time all the but time. i'm gonna say certain things that to make you know it's authentic you know what i'm saying on this hard this this quote unquote, uh, unquote yeah. r&b type beat right so i think that balanced it mm -hmm. and then they accepted it and then it just went yeah, yeah that was and the that vehicle was that was influential yeah. for me too because we didn't get to see that a lot like we we're very yeah. hard on that making sure like if you're one way you were uh, this way you know and yeah. you didn't want to stray so after seeing you taking those chances funny you said that in the story you know like it made me realize that i could do the same thing you right know, you know and you don't have just because you're from rexdale or just because you know mm -hmm. you like wu-tang does not mean you can't rap yeah, on other type yeah, of records yeah, man and yeah. still come off authentic yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. exactly yeah, that's, that's what dope. it was that's dope and like fuck. go ahead go ahead <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's on right now man yeah. <laughs> you were fairly young though when you were when you got had that first record come out right yeah so, so yeah you, uh, out of your successes yeah. from ghetto concept mm -hmm. to your you know solo career launch mm -hmm. with that record winning awards right you were getting a lot of accolades on that. How did that affect you as a young man? I mean, we were young, but still, like I was, when we won our first Juno, I was like 19. You know what I'm saying? It's young, man. Yeah. That's young. It's young, man. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? When did so, you start start rapping? When did you write your first rap? What'd probably you say? 12 or 12, something. 12-ish. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Still young, man. Hell yeah. yeah. And was it, uh, were you excited after that first record, uh, you know, after seeing the, the re like how it was received and the awards? Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, we shot the video mm. and again, you know, we don't, we don't follow trends. We, we want to set them, right? Yeah. So this was something that I was bringing to Canada mm -hmm. for the first time. And the director for the video, shout out David Cropper, mm -hmm. David, the video that David did for us, the quality was like on another level than what we're used to seeing in Canada too. Mm. So with that track and the, the the quality of the video, people were like losing their mind. And I remember that. And Rap City was playing it, and then it got to number one. And I was like, it, it was everything just started going up, up, yeah, up, yeah. up. So I leveled up from coming out of the group, mm. forward and out of the group. You know, you really did, yeah. bro. Like, and. Uh, I'm just thinking about all the records that you've done. Um, it reminded me of. 360 right yeah and i love that record for many reasons but you also i don't know how you did this you got julie black to like just kind of stay in a lower tone pocket she didn't do she didn't take him to church or anything yeah. like that like it sounds yeah. so great her yeah. voice you know but usually she's one that's really ready to right. take it to the whitney houston level right right but she just kept it just round and round yeah, yeah. and who's the, who's the other uh jason Okay, the, my homeboy Jason. That's what's up. Yeah, he was doing some ad libs. Yeah, and, yeah, it sounds yeah, great together, yeah, man. Yeah. We, did you guys create that together in the studio? Just sing the hook or what? Julie came up with the hook, mm -hmm. and Jason, he he was creative like that, so right. he he came up with the his own ad libs and yeah, stuff, and yeah, it worked. Yeah. It worked, you yeah, know. Dope record, man. Shout out to Jason and Julie Black. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? After though that time period. And, and you know, after your brother passing, that seemed like a low point. Were there more low points after, after your solo career launched? I mean, yeah, because like decisions that I was telling you that I was making, um, that was putting me, that was like setbacks all the time, mm. setbacks, lawyers, you know what I'm saying? And facing a lot of, a lot of time, you know? So I feel like right when I was about to really take off yeah like i mean gotta get mine and take and take a look and 360 all did its thing mm -hmm. but i feel like i was supposed to go even more more at a different level because in 2000 i was out in philly i had an apartment in philly and still making bad decisions and stuff like that mm -hmm. i had access to boys to men mm -hmm. black street mm -hmm. And again, over here, nobody did that yet. No, no. To sing hooks. Imagine yeah. getting Boyz II Men to sing a hook. Crazy. That's Look so, what they did for LL, man. Yeah. Like, come on. So with that now, 
I, that year I made a terrible decision mm. and that just I couldn't cross the border you know how it goes you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying you mm -hmm. get charges you can't do anything you can't move so I was in my own space I was stuck up here oh, up here okay. yeah I couldn't go back over there so that was a setback I had to put the album off I had to fight the case I feel like that was once I got Black Street because they were popping back in those yeah. times with Foxy Brown yeah, yeah. those those times so yeah. I feel like at those times, man, like the decisions. That's why you can't mix the music and the street, the street stuff together, mm, together man. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta pick one. You, you know what I mean? And I, don't pick the streets. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling y'all to pick the streets. Pick it for them, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it, man. Don't do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stick to one, man. Yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah. Um, one thing that I don't think enough people know about is that you and Ghetto Concept are the originators of the word T dot. T yeah. O dot, right? Yeah. Yeah. You guys came up with that. Yeah. Well, actually, my boy, my boy, um, Sean, right? Another Sean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. My Sean. boy. He, um, we was in, we were in New York, mm. and we was freestyling in front of the Terrell brothers' house. Okay. And our boy was freestyling with us, and he said, "I'm chilling here with my niggas from the T dot O dot." And it sounded so dope, man. It sounded so dope that when we came, when we followed back to Toronto, the next song that we recorded, Quadro actually yeah. set it on the song. That was in, uh, what's the song? Much, Much Love. Much Love, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Much Love. Much Love, yeah. yeah. And then after that, you know, because it was getting played on 88.1 and 105 of back course. then, you know what I'm Heavy saying? Bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we started hearing a little bit more, a little bit more T dot, T yeah. dot. Yeah, yeah. And then we started hearing the sports casters, everybody, everybody started using it. So yeah. it just, it was something that, you know, we should have directly did something with. You so know you say mean? Cardi owe you some money or what? <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, we should have, we should have, we should have, you know, locked that down. I right? revolutionized yeah, yeah. it, man. I mean, even I grew up in the States. That's all. I mean, it was like Toronto would be yeah. T dot. T -dot so which, yeah. which part of the crazy. states? Uh, Washington DC area. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you said Howard, I was like, Ooh, shout out Howard. Okay, yeah, yeah, man. Washington is dope. So yeah. you're out in Philly. Mm -hmm. You're on a uh, a major independent, I would say. You know, which was quality, I believe. Was it? Okay, so quality was ghetto concept. Okay, times. okay. E mm -hmm. Easy on emotion and all mm -hmm. that, right? Um, in Philly, we were independent. Okay. In Philly, it was got to get mine. 360 take a look boom but then after that somebody wanted to again wanted mm. to put money into it and push it i was getting producers like just blaze and mm. yeah like we was we was on our way and then it was a thing where like i'm a loyal i'm a loyal person right so it's me and my oldest brother kane he's my manager mm. shout out to kane yes Kane now, me and Kane, we, you know, we, we, we moving, we doing our thing together out here. But the dude, he was moving shysty, like he wanted to steal me away from, from, from my bro. Yeah, like, you know, but like I said, I'm loyal. Yeah. You know, I could have sold my soul yeah. to be the most, the, the biggest rapper, but I didn't, I didn't want to, we don't sell our soul, we don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. hey man, you, you got to pick one. So I stuck with Kane. And some people, you know, they go the other way, man. We were just talking about that today. Mm -hmm. um, the first, I guess, female signee of OVO, OVO right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, she ended up leaving her, her boyfriend to go with Drake, <laughs> you know, because she wanted to get the back. I don't know the story. Don't hate me on it. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you know, maybe we come from a different cloth where, where loyalty is uh, something that matters. And I'm yeah. sure because you guys are family on top of that, yes, yes, yes. you know, that's got to play heavy into that as yeah. well. Um, any regrets in terms of like, not that, but being independent, being on a label, having access to mm -hmm. a lot of these other artists at the time, um, how would you maneuver what, if you would tell your younger infinite version self what mm -hmm. to do? I'm actually happy with the decision that I made mm -hmm. because I don't know how I'd be living with feeling like I sold my soul. Like, right. I don't know how mm -hmm. I'd be feeling like that. Right. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? And you can say that with hindsight now as yeah. a big man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you might have got good. to certain places. Yeah. But, you but how be... would you live with it? Because mm. you just dissed your bro. Right. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. You just sold your soul. So it's like, nah, I'm good. We'll, we'll figure it out another way. You get me? For sure. yeah. yeah. So did you sign with a major in your career? 
I mean, BMG distributed our stuff. Mm -hmm. you so that's know? major yep. for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. how uh, how was that relationship and learning how to be in that industry? You know, did the industry test you with the major labels? You know, one test was your loyalty to your brother. Right, right. But you know, the industry can be amazing, but mm -hmm. it can also not be so amazing. Uh, the only test that, that, like I said, that story right there, yeah, that yeah. was a test right there. But I mean, I never really, it was a, it was a toss. Like if you get signed to a label, are they going to try to switch up your creativity? Mm. You know, you're going to lose creativity or do you just want distribution? I rather distribution and, and have full creative control. Yeah. You know, Which so not a lot of people would have that site back then, you know, so yeah. it seemed like you were very well aware because back yeah. then anybody, most people would sign a deal right away. Right away. Cause yeah. you know, you hear about deal, you run, go sign. You know, no, we don't, <laughs> we don't do that. Do that. Yeah, we I, don't do I that. I just think it just speaks to your integrity. Yeah. You know, something that you stand on that I've seen for pretty much your, how long as I've seen you. Yeah. I'm, 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 I guess I'm lucky to have got that knowledge at that young age not mm. to do certain things. You know what I mean? Like certain guys, they, they would sign their publishing away. We're not signing our publishing away. Mm. Snoop, all of them, Biggie at one point did. And that, took away all their money yep. you can't sign away your publishing no you cannot you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. who told you about that or do you just had to i just think yourself I don't, to be like i'm not doing I, it i just i i'm just in the right places at the right time you know what i mean and plus my brother kane mm -hmm. he's he has a lot of knowledge mm -hmm. so just with that and watching and paying attention mm -hmm. i knew what didn't work and what not to do Facts. you know what i'm saying Facts. yeah i'm gonna say one word to you man you tell me how you feel about it uh vandy Vandy? Yeah. You know Vandy. what I'm talking about? Vandy. The, um, I was I heard a story. I might be saying the name wrong, but it's somebody who picked Vandy? you up. Vandy? Vandy, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, Vandy, man. Vandy gave me an opportunity to be the head crip in the movie Redemption. Easy. Yeah, Yo. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when Tookie Williams was was calling the truce, yes. I was the, the, the crypt that initiated the truce in the movie. Yes, sir. So Vondi, man, Vondi, Vondi scoped me out. He looked at the whole, everybody that was there and said, yo, this guy right here. Mm. And he, he walked to me, he goes, yo, you know how to throw up a crypt sign? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, my yeah. nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so you best believe it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that that right there, that was a highlight too, man. That's mm. crazy, man. If y'all don't know, you know, um, Redemption, the Tuki, Stan Tuki Williams story, played yeah. by Jamie Foxx. It's yeah. a big deal, man. You know, the uh, originator of the whole Crip gang and stuff. And for you to, where did they shoot that? They shot that mostly in Toronto. Right. Really? Yeah, yeah. But see, Tuki was the co-founder of the Crips, Right. you know? Raymond Washington was the the the, the he was an other founder, right? Mm -hmm. But um, took he he got put on death row, right? And then you know my brother Kane actually worked on that movie, mm. so he got to speak to Tookie on the phone as like what? How did he work in the movie? Like he 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 just worked on um he was just a part of the crew. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you know he he had that experience too, but Dope. there was something about Kane that. Tookie Williams' best friend, Barbara Bicknell. Mm -hmm. She's the lady that was actually in one of the last people he seen before they gave them the injection, mm -hmm. right? Right. And in the movie, Lynn Whitfield plays her. So she took to Kane on set, and then for some reason, Kane and Tookie ended up on the phone while he's on death row. I thought that was cool, man, because not a lot of people can say they spoke to Tookie Williams. I don't know. Facts. My, my, my brother spoke Facts. to Tookie Williams. Mm -hmm. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? It's huge, man. Yeah. And uh, how, like, uh, was he, um, I guess, inspirational to you in a way as uh, as Tookie? Like, how did you feel about being in his film? Like, man, like I said, it was historical just yeah. to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and um, he told Barbara Bicknell that that same scene that you, that we were just speaking about with me initiating the the truce was his favorite part of the movie, and that made me feel like. You know what I mean? That oh, made yeah. me feel really good, man. Hell yeah. Yeah. Like How did you that. like that experience being in a film? You know, did you enjoy the yeah. acting part? Mm -hmm. And you know now what? you're involved in some I like, films, right? I did a few few things in my career mm -hmm. where acting is concerned. Like CBC, Drop the Beat. And, Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Y'all know about Drop the yeah. Beat. Yeah. Go look deep. that up. Yeah. Into yeah. Deep was big too, yeah. man. 
with LL Cool J actually playing the bad guy. Yeah, and movie. Omar Epps and yeah, all Yeah, and Omar Epps. Yeah. And let's not forget Nia Long. Hello. Yeah, yeah Nia let's Long. Let's go. You got close? Yeah, you yeah, shoot yeah, your yeah, shot yeah. or what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't get a chance to, man. But, I mean, they had some love scene going on, but yeah. like I was there watching, but they actually had a little wall put up mm. so we couldn't actually see. It was like a little crack you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they actually block it off. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. They make them feel comfortable. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. But the yeah. experience overall, like just acting, like oh. uh, over rapping or what? Like if you had to choose. Acting money all day. All you day. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All day. I had my trailer. I had Ooh. certain things set up. Like they treat you like a king, mm -hmm. you know, when you're on, at a certain level. Yeah. They so, value, I guess. It feels like they value me. Yeah, they more. do. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. I mean, music, you can make a lot of money off of music. Of but I mean, doing shows is where you hip hop, you mm -hmm. make a lot of money right. when you do your shows and stuff like that. You ever have to deal with any uh, janky promoters trying to do shows and stuff like that? Man, I'm sure we came across a few, a few of them. You know yeah. what I'm that, see, that's part of the game that I wish was different. I know everybody's kind of got to make their money mm -hmm. and promoters. You know, we were just talking to Aileen Yu about like being a promoter and how difficult it could be yeah. as a woman, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get everything situated, you know. So I feel the, the pain of a, being a promoter, but like, bro, as an artist, you know, you, you're putting on a show for people, you're giving your time, you're being creative, you're, you're, you're the drop. Right, you know, right. so for promoters to move shysty or janky mm. around the artists and that dynamic, I wish is one of the things I would wish would change. In the right, game, right, right. You know? If they don't make a lot of enough money on their show, they try to, you know. Yeah, they, who's the first yeah, person they're cutting? Yeah. yeah, the person that's bringing everybody to the show, like yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah, I never yeah, got yeah, that yeah. part. But yeah, to I wanted to own. ask, um, how do you see the Toronto hip hop scene today, and how it's evolved from when you started out to what it is now? I feel like I like the direction it's going. Mm. I mean, it's almost like a, Toronto has its own sound in a way, but it's, you know, I like the way everybody's getting the confidence to build and put time into their craft to build what hip hop is now in Canada. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like it's more competition, you know, friendly competition. Yeah. You know, and I think it's making one another better too at the same time got it you know so i like the way it's going drake's representing in, in, in internationally in a real good way for sure, man. Yeah. sure love. i mean that brings us to the next question man you were one of the north stars man at yeah. the ovo uh fest last year yeah um that's a big deal yeah that's that a, a big deal. deal and i felt like very deserved mm -hmm. like if they were gonna do something like that and your name wasn't on there yeah that might be a problem for me. I might have to <laughs> talk to somebody over there, yeah, you know, yeah, at OVO. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. glad um, they made that happen. And yeah. uh, did you get a call from Charlie or like, how did it yeah, work? Yeah, they called me mm -hmm. and they called me and asked me, yo, you want to you wanna perform, take a look and got to get mine? Mm. I'm like, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Why not? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that ex that was a huge experience, a right. great experience. And you got to bring Erica with you, who's your artist yeah. as well. Yeah, Erica, you know? like yeah, yeah, I wanted her to. That was her first show too. What? So oh, that wow. was her first Yo, show. You set so, the bar high. Yeah, bro. <laughs> so yeah, we set the bar high <laughs> with that one. Threw her in the fire. Yeah, like that's what's up. That's the best so way I mean, to learn. So anything after that, I know she's gonna be able to hold it down. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's like one of my first shows was in front of the people at the seminar, all the artists. Mm -hmm. SWV leaning, waiting for me to start spitting. And I, I got butterflies, like right. a, like right. a whole bunch of people, bad boy, everybody's in there. People who you've you. seen on TV yeah. doing their thing. Yeah. Now they're in your audience waiting they're, for you. They're my audience yeah. waiting for me to spit. Crazy. Mm. So, I mean, when I, when I spit, and I heard the reaction, it was positive. So that gave me more confidence. Yeah. So is that good advice that you would give to artists, man? Like, uh, just throw yourself in the fire type of thing. Like, you know, go, <laughs> what would you say to somebody doing a show? Man, I, some, you know what? It's, it's hard. It depends. It depends on the individual. Right. If you can handle the fire, mm -hmm. then just go, go ahead, do it. And that, that you'll be okay after that. True. You know what I'm saying? True. You'll be okay after that. I like that. And what made you decide going into management? Mm -hmm. You know, I just feel like, I mean, I'm not going to rap forever. Yeah. I want to. I want to go 
you know, in front of the scenes also, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I want to be effective in the music in another way also, not just in front of the cameras, but also behind, behind the cameras, the cameras. Mm -hmm. you know? So managing artists, developing artists, like I'm an artist developer, mm. you know what I'm saying? If, if y'all y'all come check me if you need, you know, some development. Ooh. You, you know heard it. That's you a big heard one. it. That's a big one. Yeah. It's about to flood right now, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. So what is it that, about bro. Erica that you, you believed in her, you know? Why why her? Good question. You know what? Shout out to Redora, because Redora brought Erica to my attention. Mm. And then when I heard, before I started developing Erica, mm -hmm. I heard something that I'm like, yo, I could develop this yeah, girl into yeah. some crazy sick artist. Like, nah, she got bars, man. Yeah. Yeah, she does. And the way she's, her delivery. Her delivery's dope too. Sharp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, you don't expect it from, you know, when yeah, you see her, like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a little shock right? value yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. She, 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 she could hold it down, mm -hmm. man. She could hold it down. So mm -hmm. where she's at right now, I'm proud to see how much she's grown since. Mm -hmm. I met her. You know what I'm saying? She's really she's doing really good, man. How important is Rekka. it for uh, for her to develop her sound over time before launching a, a career? You know, is it because a lot of young artists are super hungry just to release music right away, right, right. away, right away. They might not have ten records, right? They might have just one record. And they're just like, I just want to get this out. Right. You know, how important is it in the development stage? It's very important because your first impression. I mean, I mean, if you listen to my delivery back then to now you could hear the maturity mm. you could hear the you know the bar raising you know the confidence raising the how you could hear me getting sharper from easy on the motion to take a look you can hear the difference in the delivery 360 it, it just keeps growing okay you know what i mean so i feel like the, the way erica was sounding she she already had that that quality that you were looking for but I just want to turn that into a monster now. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. So it's yeah. important. It's important to develop what you got. And consistency. Like what? What made you stay consistent throughout this whole time? Well, the love, the love of the culture, love for the culture. You know, mm -hmm. I just, I don't want to be. I see myself like my legacy. I don't see it just falling off. Mm. You know, I want to contribute back to the to the industry. Got it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like Dr. Dre, you know, he he's he's producing a lot of artists. Jay Z, he's producing, not producing, but you know, he's bringing a lot of artists to us. Yep. He brought us Rihanna, yeah. and a whole bunch of other artists. So, mm -hmm. I'd like to be my legacy to be along that wavelength where I could also bring something new to the culture, new Got to the, the music for you guys. You yeah, know what I I'm love saying? that, man. I love that. I think we yeah. need more of that, you know, mm -hmm. because. I don't know how much of that you got, you know, besides Kane or, you know, yeah. the people, your peers, basically. Yeah. But I know for me, I would have loved. Well, I've got a few. I can't even say a certain man's Cardi showed me a few things, mm -hmm. opening up for him. Mm -hmm. Socrates was big for me and showing me like uh, how to con conduct myself in the studio right. a little bit. I remember sitting in sessions with him and, and um, Kid Cut and, um, you know, Maestro as right. well. You know, right. these are all guys who just really showed me the game. They were mentors for me, right. you know, and I think that's super important. You know, yeah. so as big men now, I make sure that, you know, if younger artists are coming to me, I try and give them the game and right. I, I don't try and hold on to it because it's not for me to hold on to, man. Right. You know, so the fact that you're doing that, I think is is really dope, man. Yeah. yeah. Yo, shout out to Cardi and, and Socrates and them because, mm -hmm. yeah, they contribute a lot to, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. To this industry. What's your uh, relationship with Maestro? Because I know you guys had um, Criminal Mind record. Right, that you guys right, did. right. That was dope. Right. And you have another record together? Or is it just that yeah one? we have we have another record yeah. um we have actually three records three together. Re yeah 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 I yeah to toronto icons with ghetto concept that's, right. that's the first track that me and ghetto concept ever did together since we left the group mm. so we, we kind of we, we we let maestro have that on his crazy album, you know what I'm crazy yeah shout yeah. out maestro fresh west for man sure. don't know show, man yeah yeah that's my that's my it's my uncle right there it's <laughs> <laughs> my big bro man for sure, for sure. For sure i wanted man. to ask about like um you know now that you're managing an artist in this landscape well uh, you know us being a part of a label a lot of the uh, a big topic that comes up is canadians leaving canada right and can they sustain a career within canada versus going to the states because we, we all want that u.s creditation mm. 
do you believe artists today can survive within Canada? I think they could survive in Canada, but if you can break outside of Canada, you need other territories mm. also. You, you, Canada alone, I don't believe in Canada by itself. Yeah, I feel like you could stay in Canada, but you need to get the other territories also Got to it. be successful. Got it. Yeah, and that U.S. that U.S. check mark is important for sure. Because the, the amount of people they have in the states, you need that. You need that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask also about like uh, films. Do you still see yourself in the future? Oh, for getting sure. Getting involved in that? I love I love acting. I love films yeah. and stuff. So that's something that I'm I'm gonna be getting into. You know what I mean? Mm. I, I pulled my son in, in into into that. He's doing his thing. Oh you know yeah, hey? yeah, that's what's yeah. Up. Hey, you got the look too, hey, man. That's that's your yeah. twin right there, that's man. My twin. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's my twin, man. Yo, you show. ever do like a biopic or something like that? He's yeah. gonna be the one. Right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be a little imp. He's yeah. gonna be a little imp. <laughs> young imp. So, yeah, no doubt, no I doubt. Love that, man. I love that. So you're from Rexdale, right? Yeah, I'm from Rexdale. Grew up there. Yep. Spent a lot of your years raised, there. Raised, raised. Born and raised there. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about the importance of that neighborhood because a lot of kids that come out of Rexdale, mm -hmm. you know, they look at you as an, you know, as an icon. Right. And you always seem to rep your hood all the time. So yeah. why, why is that, man? I rep my block. I rep my, my city, my borough, because that's who, what made me who I am. That's where I learned a lot of what I know today. And my a lot of my experiences and Rexdale, like the, the the kids from Rexdale, I feel like they deserve the same opportunity as anybody else out there that's getting good opportunities. So I mean, even when we won the Juno, it showed the kids in Rexdale that they could do it too. You know, when Obama was the president, it showed all the black kids that they it's possible for you to be the president and run the country. So. Rexdale. I'm living proof, man. No sure. doubt. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Mm -hmm. It's not, I mean, we hear a lot of negative about Rexdale, negative. all the crime and the drugs and, you know, the gang violence, but it's also a good place, you know, with good people. You know what I'm saying? It's not only bad. So, I mean, shout out to Rexdale, man. I'm going to ride for that. I'm going to yeah. hold it down for, for Shout for out to your city. brand right there, right? Shout out to the brand hey, once, hey, once again, Niche. That's what's up. No man. doubt. And we had another question. What? about 50 right oh yeah what's going on with your relationship with 50 okay know? so we did a, a reebok commercial for g unit shoes right when wow. when 50 was pushing his um his shoes Shoe brand yeah yeah mm -hmm. so jesse terrero and yuli actually called me when they they followed to canada at mm. the time and they're filming 50s um commercial and they said yo inf we need you in this you know and then it worked out. Like yeah. we played football. It was like a, a commercial where we played street football. Okay. Dope. So it's just four against four, and they put me on 50s team, and we teamed up, and we we did the commercial. It turned out dope. pretty dope, man. Dope. You'll probably find that on YouTube or yeah, something. Yeah, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna search, search that, yo. Yeah, yeah. Those G Unit kicks were clean too, man. Yeah, back in yeah, the day, yeah, yeah. 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 like the S. He was beefing with S. Dot Carters, Carters back then. then. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go head to head. I remember oh, I the team oh, those are iconic. Yeah. yeah, for sure. How was that experience? You know, meeting. It him? was cool, man. You know, fifty is more humble and calmer when you stand when you see him on camera. On yeah. camera, you, you know, he thinks he you think he's he might be some mean guy, but he's not. Mm -hmm. He's mad cool, man. Right. Yeah, he's mad cool, man. So it was a good experience. I love that. Yeah, I love that, man. Yeah, were you a sports guy? Like, did you play football? Did you play ball? Like, I played. I played basketball here and there. Like, right, right, right. You know, Smithfield. Right. I, grade nine, I started. I I played. I played basketball on the team for like just the beginning of grade nine, and then it was over. You're done. <laughs> I said it was over. Started smoking. Started doing yeah. whatever. All the yeah. things that you're not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Sidebar: Do you watch uh, sports at all? You yeah, sports? one of my favorite sports is track and field. Actually, really, I love track and field. That's man. what's up, man. Yeah. Yeah. You I miss it. I, I get pissed off when I miss it. Like if it's on TV and I miss Jamaica running. Yeah, 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 yeah. You weren't the guy with TV. You saying boat money, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I can't even believe. I can't believe how they do it. Yo, that's wrong. So I'm laughing, but it's money, not even cool. Cause how does money disappear like that? Sorry. 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 <laughs> the car open. I feel like you're going to get it back, though. That's why I'm going to joke about it because there's no way they're going to let this guy's money just, just go disappear like, disappear like that, yo. Are you dumb? That's crazy, That's insane, man. man. No. Hopefully he gets this. 
I wanted to ask. Uh, I wanted to ask about the Play the Record documentary. Oh yeah, we can, uh, we can touch on that. How that that experience yeah. was. Yeah, mm. yeah. We were part of the documentary. We Play the Records. You know, Eugene was a big influence mm. on all the DJs or anybody that was obtaining hip hop in Toronto. Eugene was a smart. He still is, but I mean, he's so smart that they drove to the border, got all the brand new latest material that was out. That's what's up. And you got the look too, man. That was that's, that's how we were able to keep up. Yeah, if you ever do so like a biopic or something like that, used you could go to. Yeah. <laughs> you know, shout out Eugene, man. Yeah. That's yeah, big, if, man. Influence. That's what's up. That's a big yeah. part of the culture, man. I love that, man. I yeah. love that. So, you know, home stretch, man. What do you say? Um I I'm I'm just having such a blast talk to you man and going down these memories and just seeing how actually the, the similarities we are we had in, in the game you know but uh also learning from what you've done and, and what you're continuing to do bro you know so um just so you know man this dreams don't have deadlines podcast bro and we feel feel like you really fit that because you know even though you've had ups and downs in in your career you know, you always kind of stay true to you. You continue, even like when Ryder dropped in 2017, 18, something like that. Yeah, 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 right? Like, I, I remember hearing that on the radio. I'm like, yo, if back got, got some heat again, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so like, and you still had the same presence, the same, your vocals never changed. Your your bars were still as sharp, man. And it felt good to hear you on the radio doing your thing, man. So you, to me, epitomize what Dreams Don't Have Deadlines is all about, you know? But in saying that, I know there's somebody watching right now. Shout out to the whole dream team out there. And they're in a place right now that's like, yo, man, maybe I should just leg off of this. You know what I'm saying? I'm done with this, yo. You know, maybe they've had some sort of tragedy in their life, you know? So what would you tell that person um, why dreams don't have deadlines? And tell that because they're, they're watching right now. Yo, you see that, man. I'm a, I'm a prime example, right? I'm a prime example stick to your vision like like my said right. west says right. you know what i'm saying and i feel like you could achieve anything you want to do don't give up on your dreams why because dreams don't have deadlines <laughs> hey. i like the alley you do it Let's go. <laughs> I was ready. I was ready. I'm ready. I'll catch it, man. Kobe Shaq, let's go. Yeah, you know, we're always down for some consultation, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, man. That's amazing, man. Well, thank you so much for taking the time, man. Appreciate your, your presence here. And, mm -hmm. and I think we learned a lot. Thanks for sharing your history and giving us some inspiration. No doubt. Anytime, um, man. Can't wait to see what your future holds, man. So I know mm -hmm. it's just going to be bigger and better. Yep. No doubt. Um, but this was a pleasure, man. Uh, you know, my name is Marwan Monomini. Juice! We got the we one got and only. Infinite. Let's go, man. And let's get in the booth, man. Let's get some shit popping. Yeah. Yo, shout out to Niche. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, that was fly too, man. I'm loving that. I'm loving that. Rex still product right there. That's what's up. Work hard and I handle my business. Look up in the sky, whole squad, let's get it. No limit, no. no. no.